Christianity as the absolute contemporaneousness with Christ by Soren Kierkegaard from Preparation for a Christian Life published in 1850 translated by Lee M. Hollander in 1923 this is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Christianity as the Absolute Contemporaneousness with Christ with its invitation to all that labor and are heavy laden, Christianity has entered the world not as the clergy whimperingly and falsely introduce it as a shining paragon of mild grounds of consolation but as the absolute god wills it so because of his love but it is god who wills it and he wills it as he wills it he does not choose to have his nature changed by man and become a nice that is to say humane god but he chooses to change the nature of man because of his love for them neither does he care to hear any human impertinence concerning the why and wherefore of christianity and why it entered the world it is and is to be the absolute therefore all the relative explanations which may have been ventured as to its why and wherefore are entirely beside the point possibly these explanations were suggested by a kind of human compassion which believes it necessary to haggle a bit god very likely does not know the nature of man very well his demands are a bit exorbitant and therefore the clergy must haggle and beat him down a bit maybe the clergy hit upon that idea in order to stand well with men and reap some advantage from preaching the gospel for if its demands are reduced to the purely human to the demands which arise in man's heart why then men will of course think well of it and of course also of the amiable preacher who knows how to make christianity so mild if the apostles had been able to do that the world would have esteemed them highly also in their time however all this is the absolute but what is it good for then is it not a downright torment why yes you may say so from the standpoint of the relative the absolute is the greatest torment in his dull languid sluggish moments when man is dominated by his sensual nature christianity is an absurdity to him since it is not commensurable with any definite wherefore but of what use is it then answer peace it is the absolute and thus it must be represented that is in a fashion which makes it appear as an absurdity to the sensual nature of man and therefore it is ah so true and in still another sense so true when the worldly wise man who is contemporaneous with christ condemns him with the words he is literally nothing quite true for he is the absolute and being absolute christianity has come into the world not as a consolation in the human sense in fact quite on the contrary it is ever reminding one how the christian must suffer in order to become or to remain a christian sufferings which he may if you please escape by not electing to be a christian there is indeed an unbridgeable gulf fixed between god and man it therefore became plain to those contemporary with christ that the process of becoming a christian that is being changed into the likeness of god is in a human sense a greater torment and wretchedness and pain than the greatest conceivable human suffering and moreover a crime in the eyes of one's contemporaries and thus will it always be that is if becoming a christian in reality means becoming contemporaneous with christ 
and if becoming a christian does not have that meaning then all your chatter about becoming a christian is a vanity a delusion and a snare and likewise a blasphemy and a sin against the holy ghost for with regard to the absolute there is but one time namely the present he who is not contemporaneous with the absolute for him it does not exist at all and since christ is the absolute it is evident that in respect to him there is but one situation contemporaneousness the three or seven or fifteen or seventeen or eighteen hundred years which have elapsed since his death do not make the least difference one way or the other they neither change him nor reveal either who he was for his real nature is revealed only to faith christ let me say so with the utmost seriousness is not an actor neither is he a merely historical personage since being the paradox he is an extremely unhistorical personage but precisely this is the difference between poetry and reality contemporaneousness the difference between poetry and history is no doubt this that history is what has really happened and poetry what is possible the action which is supposed to have taken place the life which has taken form in the poet's imagination but that which really happened the past is not necessarily reality except in a certain sense namely in contrast with poetry there is still lacking in it the criterion of truth as inwardness and of all religion there is still lacking the criterion the truth for you that which is past is not a reality for me but only my time is that which you are contemporaneous with that is reality for you thus every person has the choice to be contemporaneous with the age in which he is living and also with one other period with that of christ's life here on earth for christ's life on earth or sacred history stands by itself outside of history history you may read and hear about as a matter of the past within its realm you can if you so care judge actions by their results but in christ's life here on earth there is nothing past it will not wait for the assistance of any subsequent results in its own time eighteen hundred years ago neither does it now historic christianity is sheer moonshine and unchristian muddle-headedness for those true christians who in every generation live a life contemporaneous with that of christ have nothing whatsoever to do with christians in the preceding generation but all the more with their contemporary christ his life here on earth attends every generation and every generation severally as sacred history his life on earth is eternal contemporaneousness for this reason all learned lecturing about christianity which has its haunt and hiding place in the assumption that christianity is something which belongs to the past and to the eighteen hundred years of history this lecturing is the most unchristian of heresies as every one would readily recognize if he but tried to imagine the generation contemporaneous with christ as lecturing no we must ever keep in mind that every generation of the faithful is contemporaneous with him if you cannot master yourself so as to make yourself contemporaneous with him and thus become a christian or if he cannot as your contemporary draw you to himself then you will never be a christian you may if you please honor praise thank and with all worldly goods reward him who deludes you into thinking that you are a christian nevertheless he deceives you you may count yourself happy that you were not contemporaneous with one who dared to assert this or you may be exasperated to madness by the torment like that of the gadfly 
of being contemporaneous with one who says this to your face in the first case you are deceived whereas in the second you have at least had a chance to hear the truth if you cannot bear this contemporaneousness and do not bear to see this sight in reality if you cannot prevail upon yourself to go out into the street and behold it is god in that loathsome procession and if you cannot bear to think that this will be your condition also if you kneel and worship him then you are not essentially a christian in that case what you will have to do is to admit the fact unconditionally to yourself so that you may above all preserve humility and fear and trembling when contemplating what it means really to be a christian for that way you must proceed in order to learn and to practice how to flee to grace so that you will not seek it in vain but do not for god's sake go to any one to be consoled for to be sure it is written blessed are the eyes which see the things that ye see which word the priests have on the tips of their tongues curiously enough at times perhaps even to defend a worldly finery which if contemporary with christ would be rather incongruous as if these words had not been said solely about those contemporaries of his who believed if his exaltation had been evident to the eyes so that every one without any trouble could have beheld it why then it would be incorrect to say that christ abased himself and assumed the guise of a servant and it would be superfluous to warn against being offended in him for why in the world should one take offence in an exalted one arrayed in glory and how in the world will you explain it that christ fared so ill and that everybody failed to rush up admiringly to behold what was so plain ah no he hath no form nor comeliness and when we shall see him there is no beauty that we should desire him isaiah fifty three verse two and there was to all appearances nothing remarkable about him who in lowly guise and by performing signs and wonders constantly presented the possibility of offence who claimed to be god in lowly guise which therefore expresses in the first place what god means by compassion and by one's self needing to be humble and poor if one wishes to be compassionate and in the second place what god means by the misery of mankind which again in both instances is extremely different from what men mean by these things and which every generation to the end of time has to learn over again from the beginning and beginning in every respect at the same point where those who were contemporary with christ had to start that is to practice those things as contemporaries of christ human impatience and unruliness is of course of no avail whatsoever no man will be able to tell you in how far you may succeed in becoming essentially a christian but neither will anxiety and fear and despair help one sincerity toward god is the first and the last condition sincerity in confessing to oneself just where one stands sincerity before god in ever aiming at one's task however slowly one may proceed and if it be but crawling one is at any rate in the right position and is not misled and deceived by the trick of changing the nature of christ who instead of being god is thereby made to represent that sentimental compassion which is man's own invention by which men instead of being lifted up to heaven by christianity are delayed on their way and remain human and no more the moral and what then does all this signify it signifies that every one in silent inwardness before god is to feel humility before what it means to be in the strictest sense a christian 
is to confess sincerely before god what his position is so that he may worthily partake of the grace which is offered to every one who is not perfect that is to every one and it means no more than that for the rest let him attend to his work and find joy in it let him love his wife rejoicing in her let him raise his children to be a joy to him and let him love his fellow men and enjoy life god will surely let him know if more is demanded of him and will also help him to accomplish it for in the terrifying language of the law this sounds so terrible because it would seem as if man by his own strength were to hold fast to christ whereas in the language of love it is christ that holds fast to him as was said then god will surely let him know if more is demanded of him but what is demanded of every one is that he humble himself in the presence of god under the demands of ideality and therefore these demands should be heard and heard again and again in all their absoluteness to be a christian has become a matter of no importance whatever a mummery something one is anyway or something one acquires more readily than a trick in very truth it is high time that the demands of ideality were heard but if being a christian is something so terrifying and awesome how in all the world can a man get it into his head to wish to accept christianity very simply and if you so wish quite according to luther only the consciousness of sin if i may express myself so can force one from the other side grace exerts the attraction can force one into this terror and in the same instant the christian ideal is transformed and is sheer mildness grace love and pity looking at it any other way however christianity is and shall ever be the greatest absurdity or else the greatest terror approach is had only through the consciousness of sin and to desire to enter in any other way amounts to a high crime of less majesty against christianity but sin or the fact that you and i individually are sinners has at present either been done away with or else the demands have been lowered in an unjustifiable manner both in life the domestic the civic as well as the ecclesiastic and in science which has invented the new doctrine of sin in general as an equivalent one has hit upon the device of helping men into christianity and keeping them in it by the aid of a knowledge of world historic events of that mild teaching the exalted and profound spirit of it about christ as a friend etc etc all of which luther would have called stuff and nonsense and which is really blasphemy aiming as it does at fraternizing impudently with god and with christ only the consciousness of being a sinner can inspire one with absolute respect for christianity and just because christianity demands absolute respect it must and shall to any other way of looking at it seem absurdity or terror just because only thereby can the qualitative and absolute emphasis fall on the fact that it is only the consciousness of being a sinner which will procure entrance into it and at the same time give the vision which being absolute respect enables one to see the mildness and love and compassion of christianity the poor in spirit who acknowledge themselves to be sinners they do not need to know the least thing about the difficulties which appear when one is neither simple nor humble-minded but when this humble consciousness of oneself for example the individual's being a sinner is lacking ay 
even though one possessed all human ingenuity and wisdom and had all accomplishments possible to man it will profit him little christianity will in the same degree rise terrifying before him and transform itself into absurdity or terror until he learns either to renounce it or else by the help of what is nothing less than scientific propedeutics apologetics etc that is through the torments of a contrite heart to enter into christianity by the narrow path through the consciousness of sin end of christianity as the absolute contemporaneousness with christ by soren kierkegaard